Hey everyone, it's Dr. Jason West, and what the heck, I'm freaking out with, uh, oh my gosh, I can't figure out why it's doing this. What in the world is happening to my video feed? Um, I'm going to have to try and fix this and come back to it. I'm really sorry, you guys. I'm going to be right back. Let me see if I can get this restarted. Hold on. Hey guys, I don't know why it's not working with uh, my background. So obviously it's just a green background, but at least it's clear and uh, we'll get going. I'm sorry about that. I don't know why it's uh, just freaking out here. So you guys, what we're going to talk about tonight, I'm excited to share with you is some uh, thoughts and ideas about arthritis. And so we've got a, a lot of really neat stuff to do and to review and to go over and guess what you guys you get the green screen because when I drop a uh, a thing behind it what happens is it just freaks out it doesn't like to go anywhere but that being said um, I have a, a really nice report that uh, we are going to put together and uh, and all you have to do in the comment section if you want something you can put arthritis I've put together a literally a really cool ebook that you can share if you want to get to uh, the arthritis program and we're good to go. So all you have to do is put that down into the comment section. And again, I'm sorry for the technical delay at the beginning and we're going to, we're going to get on it and, and uh, it's going to be really, really neat. So we're going to drop in this presentation and then we are going to talk about arthritis, what you can do at home, some of the neatest foods that you can have like cherries and pineapples or what come to mind. Um, walnuts, or excuse me, not walnuts, pecans have really neat properties for healing your thumb joints. So if you're looking for something associated with arthritis of what you can do at home, cherries, raw pineapple, and pecans are really good places to start. And so we're going to do a really nice overview on arthritis and uh, what you can do about it at home and what we can do about it here. So I, I have some really neat things that to uh, to share with you, Austin, you know, there's over a hundred different types of arthritis. And so let's go through and let's talk about these and see if we can, you know, put some structure to it. You know, one of the biggest reasons why people come to the office is because of pain. And one of the biggest reasons for pain is that little thing called arthritis. Now you can talk about all the different types of arthritis for instance, there's osteoarthritis, which is kind of the one, one something that we all are going to deal with. There is rheumatoid arthritis. There's psoriatic arthritis, autoimmune arthritis. So, you know, the overuse of the joint, it's really interesting because not everybody has arthritis because they've been diagnosed with, or, or excuse me, they have 
um, just because they're old or, or they've done a lot of work doesn't always mean they have arthritis. I think it's a lack of energy in the joint. And when we borrow things from the joint, what happens is we're setting up other joints for the problem. I see a lot of vitamin C problems in the joints. And remember, you guys, we were talking about vitamin C and the most important vitamin, which I kind of mean this tongue in cheek, is actually vitamin P. What does vitamin P stand for? Well, it's bioflavonoids. And why is it so critical? Is it because it helps vitamin C to work? So literally, if you have any of these arthritis that I've talked about, Shrogan's disease, ankylosing spondylitis, rheumatoid arthritis, um, autoimmune arthritis, reactive arthritis, mixed connective tissue disease, like all of these definitions and stuff like that are all, all associated with different types of arthritis. So I just wanted to give a really nice overview on some of the things that we can do at, at home and some of the advanced therapies and stuff like that associated with arthritis. So getting back to where we were in the presentation is uh, the lactic, whoops, the last thing I want to talk about, man, is lactic acid buildup. So lactic acid buildup is so important to be aware of when you have any type of pain or arthritis. And the reason why it's so dang important is because if you don't have enough oxygen in your body, what happens is you have the byproduct of lactic acid and pyruvate. So if you're suffering from joint pain, one of the most beneficial things that I can tell you is we got to figure out a way to increase your oxygen levels. So if movement is in consideration, that's really good. I love um, hyperbaric oxygen. Okay, you guys, I'm about ready to like go postal on my computer system. I don't know why that computer just stopped and it just went deader than dead. Um, and anyway, I'm so embarrassed and so sorry. We were talking about the different types of arthritis and then what you can do about it if you have rheumatoid arthritis, osteoarthritis, psoriatic arthritis, uh, autoimmune arthritis. And one of the most important considerations in that whole pathway is to make sure that you get um, enough oxygen into the system. The reason why that's so important and the reason why arthritis is so painful is if we don't get good oxygen nutrients to the organs and tissues, what happens is we build up 
lactic acid. And when we build up lactic acid, what happens is you get that soreness and achiness around the joint. And this is one of the things that happens with people that have um, psoriatic, excuse me, uh, fibromyalgia is their oxygen levels. You know, if you go to the gym and you haven't worked out for a while and you start doing oxygen or activities, you're going to use up your oxygen levels. And then when you use up your oxygen levels, what happens is your body gets really, really sore until you repay the oxygen debt. Now, this is what people that have fibromyalgia and polyarthralgia, polyarthritis, this is what they feel all the time. And so what's so important to be able to do is if we can restore the oxygen system and the oxygen debt um, and the oxygen things that happen into your system, then you can really make a difference arth on arthritis. And so um, one of the ways to do that, um, exercise when possible. Now, again, if you're in a lot of pain, I recognize that you're not going to be able to do all of the exercise that you would like to. And now what we can do is there's some other advanced therapies. Hyperbaric oxygen is in consideration. I think that drinking dilute amounts of hydrogen peroxide is really, really effective. I've just come across some new things on um, hydrogen gas therapy. So there's a way that you can just do hydrogen inside of a liquid. And uh, I'm really excited to learn more and more about that process. The other things that are really good, and I just ran across the study, I posted it on the internet, and that was um, hot baths. You know, one of the best things that you can do, and they're showing that it has about as much uh, effect as exercise is um, having those the, uh, hot bath. Now, that being said, I see in some of the comments um, um, things is that uh, Steve said, hey, list some of the bioflavonoids and some of the things that makes vitamin C work. And vitamin C is so important for the um, let me just separate these. I've got a little bit of a thing here. Okay, pull this down. All right, here we go. Um, but bioflavonoids, are, Steve, are things like orange fruits, yellow fruits, um, uh, cantaloupe, um, green mustards, and uh, <laughs> and then we have some uh, uh, funny person up here that says, my husband thinks vitamin P is for Pepsi. Hey, I get it. Uh, Pepsi is... is uh, is something that I struggled with for addiction for a while. And I'm so happy to, to tell you that it is possible to beat a soda pop addiction. And, uh, and, and, and the reason why so many people are addicted to soda is because they're looking for a crutch. You know, they're looking for some, some pep. They're looking for a boost or, or some other things. And so when we are able to get the body balance, which is what arthritis is all about, then what happens is you have this fantastic effect where we can start bringing balance and harmony into the joints. And so let's pick up uh, where I was left off here. Perfect, right here. Okay, one of the things that a lot of people get confused about is exactly what is arthritis. And arthritis is basically itis of the arth. Now I know that's kind of a play on words, but, um, but what happens with that is, is we get too much inflammation inside of the joints. And my personal opinion, you guys, is I think that it's, it's, it's infections. I think it's bacteria and virus are causing the overwhelming components of arthritis. And I'm going to show you the, the study that goes along with this. This is, comes just straight off of WebMD about the different types of arthritis. They, they are focusing here about rheumatoid arthritis, but there's actually a um, hundred different types you know, 46 million people in the United States, 67 in 2030. And the false notion that arthritis is, leads to a lot of different treatments. I've had people, you know, and this comes right off of the, of the movie, My Big Fat Greek Wedding, where the dad was squirting Windex on things. I've had people come in and saying, hey, they put um, um, Old Spice, um, rub it on the joints. I've, of course, talked about fish oil and glucosamine and chondroitin. And some of the concerns that we have with over-the-counter medicines, you know, Tylenol and Aleve and Naproxen, like no one wants to live in pain, but sometimes you swap out one condition for another, like maybe with the Aleve is going to help with the arthritis, but it has a tendency to burn up your kidneys. And that's why it's so important to tell people, and, and I don't know where my computer went wacky on us, but if you're listening to this and you have arthritis, here are some takeaway things that you can do at home. Uh, number one, I love raw pineapple. 
and that pineapple doesn't come out of a can. There's something that happens and it loses its effectiveness. But if you can take raw pineapple and cut it, one of the ways to de determine if it has a really good effect or not is you take that raw piece of pineapple, you put it on the tongue, and if you leave it there for a little bit, it kind of starts to hurt. And if you pull the pineapple off, you'll see these little red things on it. And that's from the enzymes inside of the pineapple that basically are trying to digest the tongue. So raw pineapple, if you obviously you don't leave it on your tongue, but if you put it inside of your system, what it does is it has these little enzymes in it. It's like Pac-Man, and it helps to eat up inflammation. So that's step one. Another thing that's really effective for arthritis is um, having cherries. Now, cherries have some proanthocyanins and some other uh, pycnogenols and some other chemicals that really help to eat up um, arthritis, um, particularly gout. And I'm going to show you some slides on, on gout and why that's so important for, for modulating inflammation. And, and cherries is an excellent source. Raw cherries or frozen cherries or 100% uh, cherry juice. Now, if you get cherry juice inside of your body, or excuse me, inside of the store, it doesn't taste that great. I mean, cherries are really common flavor, but if you have raw tart cherry juice, not only does I think it have some great arthritis properties, it also has some really nice detoxification properties, and it doesn't have to be cherry juice, uh, red cherries, frozen cherries, obviously cherries are red, frozen cherries, raw cherries. And my joke is obviously no type of cherry pie because that adds the sugar component. There's 108 ways that sugar ruins your health. And, and so we want to really, really get past that. Now, if we're kind of going back to my little presentation here on, on uh, arthritis, we pick it up. Let me blow it up a little bit. Arthritis is the sudden inflammation of the joint causing pain, swelling, or redness. Sometimes you get structural changes of the joint. And one of the biggest causes of that, obviously, is trauma. And with trauma, one of the things that is really fun and, and a really good thing to do is to differentiate between scar tissue and arthritis pain. <coughs> so there's some neat things that you can do for arthritis and scar tissue, one of them being dimethyl sulfoxide or DMSO. Another one is wheat germ oil. I've seen some neat lasers that are on the market that aren't expensive. They look like, you know, the little pen light lasers. You can put those and that photons of energy will help to really break up uh, some scar tissue things. The other thing that's important to know about arthritis cases to know if it hurts you when you're actively moving or if it hurts when <coughs> it's passive movement. Now, the difference is this. If I go to move my arm like this, this is active range of motion. If I have someone else do it when they pull it up, that's passive range of motion. And if it hurts with active, you start thinking of rotator cuff and osteoarthritis. If it's passive movement, it thinks a little bit more significant, maybe multiple joint involvement, and you start thinking of infection. Now, with the inflammation, and this is so important to understand not only for arthritis, but for all diseases in general, and that is to, to talk about whether it has the inflammation component, the swelling, the tenderness, and the warmth. And again, the protocol, if you guys are listening, I talked about pineapple, talked about cherries. One of my favorite things to recommend for people, and it's so simple and I see almost no side effects unless you have a nut allergy. And that's when you get these little inflammation things on the knuckles. And what do we call those? We call those Hebronine's nodes. And inside of the Hebronine's nodes, but basically what happens is on the x-ray, it looks like a gull wing deformity. It looks like a bird that's flying across. And, and one of the best things that you can do for that is a handful of raw pecans every day. There's a, some essential fatty acids and there's some really nice substances in pecans that really help to protect your finger joints and stuff like that. So if you've got those Hebronine nodes, um, pineapples, cherries, and also pecans are so beneficial for that. Now, some other things to consider uh, inside of the arthritis situation is I wanted to talk about um, this. Now, gout is a horrible condition that when I see in the office, I always feel really, really bad for people because they have these red swollen joints and it's literally like someone took ground glass and you put it in the joints and then you have the joints move and then what happens is they just swell up and it hurts. It's really painful. Now, why did I decide to talk about gout? Because some of the treatment protocols for gout, I think, are really beneficial for other types of our arthritis conditions. 
Um, here's another example of those those uh, gouty joints or those those nodes in the. But one of the best things that I can do to tell people what they can do for gout applies to so many arthritis. Stop drinking acid. Um, someone said they talked about, you know, vitamin P is not really vitamin Pepsi. Uh, alcohol can really irritate uh, gout. And the pork products, because they have so much purines, that amino acid that isn't breaking down uh, all the way. And so what it leads to is uric acid problems. And so if you can do that, you know, the gout treatment, start with the cherry program, consider vitamin C, insufflation, ozone therapy. Um, but there's so many different things that help detoxify gout out of the system, you know, uric acid drops and AC carbamide and these, and, and there's a really neat supplement that has something in it called arginase. It's an enzyme that helps to get rid of stuff inside of the joint. Now we can do some advanced treatments and stuff in the office, but my goal on this presentation is to really help to empower people at home. So water intake, we're gonna talk about sleep and arthritis in just a minute, the cherries, the pineapples, the pecans, and then this. Now, I don't know where this is in the presentation. I just feel like I should share it with you now. One of the best things that you can do for pain, one of the best natural things that you can do this at home because it's available just about anywhere, is to get some essential fatty acids. So a combination of fish oil or evening primrose oil or DHA or EPA, like any combination. I think it works better to have a combination oil and then you mix it with a proteolytic enzyme. Now, what is a proteolytic enzyme? It's an enzyme that helps to chew up uh, proteins. And I like a comprehensive enzyme that has um, lipase, and, and, and amylase in it. Now, what do those mean? That means it just chews up proteins and fats and sugars. So you can get these at all the almost every single store. If you'll ask the general health food store, or if you get a hold of the office, what you can do for a proteolytic enzyme, and the proteolytic enzyme helps to chew up inflammation. So when you mix essential fatty acids and proteolytic enzymes in it, it has literally like a aspirin or Tylenol will leave naproxen effect without being so hard on your liver and your kidneys. So the only downside of that approach is it takes about seven to 10 days for that to kick in. So anybody that's listening and that you're sharing this, if it's out there, if you want a really good arthritis pain relief, you just gotta be patient. And sometimes I tell people, look, we're gonna start you on four to 6,000 milligrams of essential fatty acids, which essential fatty acids usually come in 1,000 milligram pills. And this is what I do for people inside of the office is let's start on that and let's add an enzyme to it and then keep taking your aspirin or your brief, whatever's giving you relief for about a week. And then what happens is you can drop the OTC component and usually that nutritional component will give you a really good relief. So essential fatty acids and proteolytic enzymes are just really, really beneficial in, in arthritis. Now, I wanted to show you a quick slide of what gout looks like because I think there's some really nice, you know, spillover effects of the gout. When you see these like little crystals inside of the joint, that's what makes gout so dang painful. And it's not just related to gout. All arthritis have a tendency to have that pain and inflammation in the system. So if you can decrease the risk factor for gout, and you can follow that protocol, it's going to work the same for osteoarthritis, um, you know, with the worn out and bone on bone arthritis. I think it works really good for rheumatoid arthritis, psoriatic arthritis, enteropathic arthritis, osteoarthritis, autoimmune arthritis. And so there's a really good way to live inside of that gout protocol. That's why I decided to lead with that. Now, some other considerations uh, for gout. I'm going to go through these pretty quick because I want to get to to this. Um, there's a whole bunch of, of considerations for different types of gouts and autoimmune gouts, but I want to get hit the high points. And the high points is this. Almost all people that have arthritis have bowel problems, whether they want to freely admit it or not. I've had a lot of tough guys in the office say, hey, you know, it's just my shoulder bothered me. And I'll say, well, what are you doing in your life? How do you, how do you feel yourself? Well, I don't want to talk about that. You know, I'm, I'm pretty happy with my McDonald's and my vitamin P known as Pepsi and, and just fix my shoulder. Don't talk about, it. well, what the problem is, is that you are what you eat and you are what you absorb. And so when we have the workup with the arthritis and everything, you always got to look at the stomach. The more the healthier you eat, 
and the, you are what you absorb, you are what you put into your system, it really, really helps um, arthritis to have clean bowels or clean stomach system. So that being said, an arthritis pearl, okay, I talked about this a little bit, but I'm gonna come back to it because it's such an important part of life. Arthritis people, we call them arthritics, have sluggish livers and they have a buildup of a toxin in their body called guanidine and it's so alkaline. I mean, it's the opposite of being acidic and it's caused by constipation and cell trauma. So guess what? If you're having arthritis conditions, so many times people have constipation, they have slow bowels and it's a buildup of this toxin and then you get cell trauma in the body and it just compounds everything. And so when we can help to clean out the liver um, with the guanidine and stuff like that, it really helps to clean up the system. Now, when you're really alkaline, the calcium precipitates out and then you have what basically is osteoarthritis. And there's this really neat, I've talked about it several times, there's this really neat natural thing that comes from sugarcane and it's called beta call. It's full of something called Wolson factor. And what Wolson factor does is it binds up with guanidine and gets it out of the body. So you think about sugarcane, we take all the poisons out and we give that to people and then we throw away the good stuff. Dr. Wilson was an arthritis researcher, Oregon State University of Health Sciences, and discovered this amazing byproduct of sugarcane extract. There's also some of it in raw soybeans, which I think raw soybeans are pretty healthy for you. But when we ferment the soy and we turn it into, you know, soy sauce and, and some other things, it turns into a xenoestrogen or a fake estrogen and it's not as healthy. But raw soy, soybeans and uh, the sugarcane extract have some amazing arthritis properties associated with it. And if we can do that to detoxify the body, it helps nearly all types of arthritis. And guess what? It has full of something in it called anti-stiffness factor. So bringing that up, Dr. Wilson um, discovered this factor is named after here and people that take the Wilson factor, it makes them feel more flexible. Now there's multiple places you can get it in health food stores and you can probably get it online. Um, one thing that I'm encouraging people is if you want um, information, I've compiled this, it's I think it's a 27 page report on all these different types of arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, psoriatic arthritis and everything. And I'm sharing it with everybody. All you have to do is type in hashtag arthritis or hashtag joint inside of, of our program. But I also give you a, re, a mechanism to get the Wilson factor if you need it. It's not expensive. I, I wanna say it's like $21 for, um, I think it's a, a, a 45 day supply. So what is that? About 50 cents a day. There's some really nice considerations for uh, the Wilson factor. And, and that's so helpful for arthritis and it doesn't, uh, doesn't burn things up. So when I say burn things up, it doesn't burn up your liver and kidneys. And it came out of a book called Vitamins and Medicine by Bicknell and Prescott. Uh, the FDA said we don't like that you call it anti-stiffness factor, so we call it Wilson factor. And so uh, it comes from sugarcane juice, sometimes raw cream and rye soybeans. And by the way, pasteurization destroys the anti-stiffness factor. And there was a way that you can ex extract it and get it out of the system. It also has a lot of vitamins and minerals in it. And anyway, it's in a product called Betacol. Okay, now you do have to be a little bit careful with Betacol because if you start taking a bunch of it right away, it'll flush the toxins from the liver. And what happens when you flush the toxins from the liver? You're gonna get a lot of diarrhea or loose bowels I think this is is somewhat healthy, but it can be distressing from people that are from are having constipation and causing arthritis, and then it goes over, and all of a sudden they have loose bowels. They're like, I don't know if this is good for me. It's a flushing response, and so I really, really like that as part of the of the uh, beta call process, or excuse me, the arthritis process. And again, if you need some of this, you can just go in and you can type in, and I'll send you the report on this. We're trying to do a nice overview of pain. And so to kind of summarize what it is, arthritis is irritation of the joint. There's over a hundred different mechanisms or a hundred different diagnoses. And basically it caused people to lose control. And when they say lose control, like when people come into the office and say, Dr. West, I have shoulder pain. That's not really what they're saying. Yes, that's part of it. But they're also saying, look, I can't hug my wife. I can't sleep on my side. I can't throw a baseball. I can't garden. I can't play the piano. I can't do the things that I like. And so they've lost something. And so when you go to take care of arthritis, when you can put everything back 
in balance and harmony. And some of the best things that we can do for this are the at-home mechanisms. So try to reduce the amount of refined white sugar and high fructose corn syrup and artificials to sweeteners. Like those aren't the healthiest for us. Um, we should, if there's 143 ways that sugar ruins your health and it particularly aggravates arthritis. Uh, water is underrated. Um, there was a book called Your Body's Many Cries from Water by a Dr. Batman GD. He was an Iranian medical doctor that is just one of the classics that talks about how arthritis can be helped with increased water intake. And then your natural foods, cherries, raw cherries, frozen cherries, or pure cherry juice, raw pineapple, not out of a can, and not, you know, <laughs> modified in any other way, not dipped in, in brown maple syrup glaze um, or anything like that. Just raw pineapple has those enzymes. I forgot to mention papaya. And then things that protect your finger joints are raw pecans. Um, if you can get a handful of raw pecans every day, a handful of raw cherries, like that's one of the best um, anti-inflammatory and best um, things you can do for arthritis. Now, as the one of the supplement things that you can get this in so many different places and the proto exact protocol is down in our report, but I'm just going to tell you what it is because I want people to live a cleaner life of not having to use anti-inflammatories or over-the-counter medicines by taking about four to 6,000 milligrams of essential fatty acids. That's fish oil, evening primrose oil, DHEA, EPA. If you mix that together, I think it's good to have, I, I like to use one called Ultimate Omega. That's what I use in the office, but any type of fish oil, Nordic fish oil or anything like that, and mix it with a proteolytic enzyme. The one I use is Marcozyme, but you can get proteolytic enzymes in a lot of places. And when you take the essential fatty acids and the proteolytic enzymes at the same time, you can get a really nice pain relief without chewing up your liver and kidneys. Like there's virtually no side effects for the protocol that I just shared with you essential fatty acids, and proteolytic enzymes. Movement's important. Um, I have inside of the report that I'm going to talk about is we have something so important for um, sleep. is so important for arthritis. What you eat is important for arthritis. And you guys, that's kind of the real quick overview. I really wanted to empower people at home and outside of the office so that they know what they can do, reduce sugar, Increased cherries, pineapples, essential fatty acids, proteolytic enzymes, water, and sleep is a really nice spot. Now, I'm going to do this as a series. This is just the overview. I think I'm going to go more in depth in the different types of arthritis. But that's really kind of what I wanted to cover is to empower people at home. As a reminder, literature just came out that shows that hot baths are almost effective as exercise. So if you're hurting a lot, a bath with some Epsom salts and two cups of apple cider vinegar is a really good place to start with pain. And, and that's kind of what we're going over. If you want more information about uh, the clinic, you can go to West Clinic online. I usually have a ticker here and, uh, um, and get information. We're going to be doing this every week. Next week, we're going to be going into a more advanced things for arthritis. This is the home thing. I want to help people to get off of over-the-counter medicines whenever possible. I'm Dr. Jason West. That's our program tonight. I apologize for the hiccup in, in the thing. I had to restart the computer and everything else. Just as a reminder, you guys, right here, you can get uh, the joint or you can do this. Uh, um, here he is right here. Okay, free ebook arthritis that I'll be sending to you as a link if you want to download. I think it's about a 25, 26 page of report that gives the protocols and talks about the advanced therapies. And we talk a little bit about the different types of arthritis. And I'm excited to share that with you. Um, really, that's what we're going over tonight. I got to get ready for a question and answer period at seven o'clock inside of our Thrivers program. If you're interested in being a Thrivers program, it's the westclinic.com. You can get that information and uh, hopefully I won't have any technological glitches. Anyway, you guys, that's our program. I'll see you for more advanced things next Wednesday night on arthritis. And that's the program. We'll see you.